Kari Cruz, welcome to my channel. If you're new, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also follow me on social media at Miss Tori Cruz. I really appreciate it. Today we have on the show Kelly Johnson. She is a Miss California USA, a former Miss Colorado America. So welcome Kelly. So great to see your face. It's so nice to see your face. I love this. I'm so glad we get to hang out this morning. I miss you. I do too. We're only a few hours away, but yep. we, we need to get together more. Absolutely. It's lovely. Thanks for having me on your show. Is that what we're calling it? Is it a show? What are we it's calling it? It's a show. It? Highlights and Heels. Oh. Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited. Sorry, I kind of lost my voice. It was my birthday weekend, so lots of like yelling and fun things happening, but so excited to be here this morning. Yes. Well, I'm so happy to have you. So if any of you listeners aren't familiar with Kelly and what she does, because she does like a million different things, <laughs> Kelly, please tell us what you do for a living, what your past is like in pageantry. Just give us a little bit of background. Yeah, no problem. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Kelly Johnson. I'm a nurse. My first stint in pageantry was as Miss Colorado 2015 for the Miss America system. I, if you remember that, that pageant year, Betty won that year from Georgia. I was the girl that did the nursing monologue. So that was my talent. I stood up there in purple scrubs and spoke about nursing. Um, that was my first pageant and that kind of spiraled into this really cool viral video of my monologue and a, a big media tour that was really fun that I got to go on to be on Ellen and Dr. Oz and a whole bunch of different shows to talk about nursing after I did that monologue on, on the Miss America pageant. And then I moved out to Los Angeles and a couple years later thought, you know, got the pageant itch. We all get it. It's <laughs> so real. <laughs> but I wanted to compete for California, USA. And to be honest, it was kind of just something I wanted to do to get fit again, to buy a gown again, to make more friends. I really, 200 women compete in California. I didn't think it would be me, but it was me and it was awesome. And then I got to go to Miss USA where I met you, which was so fun. And that was just last year. And now I'm finishing up my doctorate in nursing. So I, I still am practicing nursing and I am helping out with a couple of companies. So I run um, the marketing department for a travel nursing company. I'm the chief nurse advocate for Wanderly. And then I'm also the host of Scrubs Mag TV, which means I just interview really cool nurses. So if you've seen like a story about a nurse or a nurse that wins a marathon or, you know, something like that, we fly there and we interview that nurse. And I also am an ambassador for Scrubs Magazine and for Cherokee Uniforms and a company called Strategic Partners that owns a whole bunch of healthcare uniforms. So I know that sounds like so <laughs> craziness. I do a lot of public speaking, but my jobs are just kind of getting my hands in nursing in various ways, but also still being involved in kind of that on-camera public sector where I do speaking as well. That's amazing. Like I said, she does a million things. It's madness. I, I know. I love it. I, really describe it so if you guys have questions just let me know but it's just a lot a lot of taking care of nurses that's what it is that's so great so how did you get involved in nursing oh that's a great question so my family actually we lost my dad when I was really little to colon cancer and we just had really really great nursing care and when kind of when we spent that time in hospitals and we saw nurses and we saw doctors and everything like that one of my sisters actually I've got two sisters one of them decided to also do nursing. We just saw like how wonderful they treated our family and they were there for us during this like horrific time in our life. And we just wanted to do that for other families. So for me, it was kind of easy. I've known kind of my whole life. I loved math and science and I, I wanted to take care of people. And I think I have almost like an innate instinct within me where I, I just like want to take care of people. I want to host things. I want to, you know, I want to shower people with stuff. I want to give gifts. That's just kind of my nature. That's like my personality type. And so it's taking care of people, you know, it's just something that kind of came came naturally for me. And then when I actually got into the profession, I realized I could continue on in my education and I got my, I want to get my doctorate and finish it next year because it gives me the opportunity to have my own patients and kind of be the boss, which I am a leader. That's by nature, Tor. I'm a leader. So Amen, sister. But yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. it was just, you know, we went through something pretty horrible as when we were little and we had nurses that made it better for us. And I just wanted to do that for somebody else. That's great. And knowing your heart too, it's just like full circle. It makes total sense why you're an amazing nurse and do what you do. So, Thanks. It's so funny because at Miss USA, I was like, felt like the maternal figure. I was with Kaylin <laughs> and Lauren and Kaylee over this weekend. Those are some of our pageant sisters, as you guys probably know. But we were talking about that. Like I was taking care of people that fell. I had band-aids. People came to me for ibuprofen. And it's just like what I love doing. It made so much sense to me to do that. That's great. And so also in your background, of course, there's pageantry. You were an athlete in college. And so describe going from an athlete to a pageant girl. How do you juggle both? That is such a good question. 
Well, so when I first started competing and, and, you know, the Miss Colorado pageant was after I had actually graduated college. I don't think I could have ever done it during college because I was the captain of our volleyball team in college and we, we worked really hard. I mean, it was like collegiate athletics is no joke. So we, I don't think I could have ever done both, but I think the transition from one to the other was amazing for me because it gave me that sense of competing still. So when I was going, I played college, you know, I played volleyball since I was 12. So probably for about a decade. And so then being giving up, you know, that competition level of my life and then going into pageants where it's so different, like you're not doing sports, but you're still competing was just something that was kind of like a natural, like seamless ease for me. Like, I think, you know, Tor, like people get really nervous when we're competing in pageants. And for me, it was just so much easier, I think, because I had done it. I had already been on like that kind of a stage where people are watching you compete with someone else or against somebody else. But yeah, I mean, they're very, 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 very different. It also helps too to have some background in nutrition and exercise, you know, preparing for swimsuit mm -hmm. and things like that. So kind of a seamless transition for me. I still get to play some sometimes and I still get to dabble in pageant stuff. But yeah, it is. It was a crazy, crazy life. A lot of competition in my life. Always fun, right? Healthy competition. Right? Healthy competition. <laughs> yeah. What I talk about in my keynote too is how in pageantry, everybody goes into it. A lot of people do thinking maybe you're competing against the other girls to win. Right. And it's completely different. You're totally. only competing against yourself the whole time. And I think we found that out and probably both Miss America for you and Miss yeah. USA for both of us. That. Yeah, I think so too, for sure. You know, I mean, there's like, of course you see the other women and you probably, like, it's tough to not compare. Like when you're just next to somebody, like, is she taller? Is she shorter? What does she look like in a swimsuit and all these things? When you actually get in the room where you're on stage, it's true. You're the only person you're actually competing against is yourself. It's you calming your own nerves. It's you remembering your own preparation. It's you, you know, getting in the gym every day. It's you, you know, feeling that confidence and evening out. For sure. I a hundred percent agree with you. So what's the difference between Miss America and Miss USA for you? Ooh, that is such a good question. Well, obviously, like, you know, the technical answer is the, like, the age limit, and then there's no talent portion, but for me, Okay, like, non-technical. Let's get, yeah, like, down like, and dirty. I'm What's like, the difference? Me, people ask all the time. They're like, how are you Miss Colorado and Miss California? Where did you live? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, one's Miss America, and we go into that talk, and one's Miss USA, and you have to be a resident for X amount of months, and, you know, the whole thing. But, so, I do, we have that conversation. For me, the experiences were, I mean, I'll just be really honest with you. Mm -hmm. The Miss America pageant, the age division is so much younger. I think it's 18 to 24 or something like that. And for USA, it's, I think it's like 18 to 28 or, I mean, I probably, I don't really know, but it's something somewhere in there. But for me, Miss America was a lot of younger, younger women that just still had a lot of maturing to do. And I think that's normal, but when you're putting people who are that young in a competition setting and we're also female, it was just a little bit more competitive for me. It was a little bit more intense where but competition wise, just specifically, but I mean, my best friends came out of that pageant as well. But for me, that experience was also brand new. I had never really done anything like that before. I didn't grow up doing pageants. It wasn't really my life. And so to then be in that, I was just kind of like soaking up every moment. It wasn't like, I've got to win. I've got to get to the top five. I just was like really happy to be there and just wanted to enjoy all the experiences. And I will say too, Miss America, we did a lot more like on TV. Like we did a lot more really big public appearances. Like we went to Good Morning America and we were on Inside Edition. And, you know, so we did a lot more of that kind of stuff. But Miss USA was just so much more what felt like kind of a family for me because all the girls were just so much older. We're in our careers, you know, we're there because, right? My best friends, it's like, we're in our careers, we're older. We want to like actually enjoy this experience with our friends. We wanted to make friends. We wanted to compete to do well for ourselves and for our states, but not because we didn't like the other state. You know, it was just such right. a different feel. It was just so much more mature and it just felt like it was business women almost competing for a job. Like it really felt like that. And so it was just, yeah, it was so, it was peaceful for me. And I loved my roommate. Well, I love both my roommates in both situations. That is definitely true. But I absolutely love Julie. She's from Hawaii. And spending that time with her for two weeks. I and mean, we're still best friends. I just saw her this weekend. And it's just really great. I mean, I think a lot of people say, you know, your friends come out of pageants, but it's like one or two. And I can really say from USA, I bet there's not one person I don't think I could call. And I can honestly, genuinely say that. And that's really nice. Oh my gosh, yeah. And I could agree. And we actually roomed right next to each other at Miss USA. So that was Yeah, we did. I remember the time. first time I saw you, Tor. I remember the first time I walked out of my of my of my room with Julie and I saw you and I was like, She looks familiar, but like what state is she? And like the whole thing. And you were so warm and welcoming and we just hit it off right off the bat. But yeah, we had a good floor. I we was, did. We had we an did. awesome floor. It was so much fun. The memories were amazing. It was so fun. It really was. What would you recommend to girls? that want to compete in Miss America and Miss USA or trying to decide either or, because I really truly feel like 
I was not a Miss America girl, but right. I was totally a Miss USA girl. What's right. your opinion on how do, how do they choose? Oh gosh. Well, to be honest with you, if you'd asked me this question four years ago, I would have said Miss America and I'll tell you why. Miss America completely paid for my student loans. I mean, the scholarship level, there are scholarships with USA. I received them, mm -hmm. but the scholarship amount that really Miss America pushes for their state cattle holders, even not even just going to Miss America and doing well there is so much greater. Like I, I mean, I received like $45,000 in student aid that paid off all of my loans. So if I had a daughter and I was doing, and it was the year that we, when I competed at Miss America, where Miss America was still that form of Miss America, I would absolutely tell her to choose that simply because of the money and the service that we did. I was involved in volunteering constantly with Miss America, which I think is just really good for a young woman to be a part of. However, answering that question today, I would absolutely pick Miss USA. And I think it's just because all the changes at Miss America, I'm not an expert. I don't know what's going on. I don't really know any of the like key players involved, but I do know that it's changing so rapidly that I think we're losing some of the traditions and we're also losing some of what made it fun for me. And so I wouldn't be able to accurately tell them, go, you know, go, go compete for Miss America because what it's become, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. And so, and I also loved USA so much. I was so fit. I made all my best friends. Like I said, the age division, you're just going to have a better time, I think, because the women are older and just more mature and a little bit more grown up. And so I, that's what I would absolutely say is in this day and age, I would compete in the USA system for sure. But I mean, I think we'll just have to see, Tor. This is going to be something you'll probably be talking about for a long time on your show is how this Miss America whole thing is going to play out. Because I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's good. We, no one knows. I mean, it's so much has changed. It's not what we know what, what we used to know it as. So I guess we'll wait and see. But USA is really, really fun. And I think that if you're thinking about it, absolutely give it a shot. Exactly. I totally think so, too. And really, I don't even know who Miss America is right now either. Taking yeah. away the different competitions. I don't know if they're still even going to call it a pageant. I really don't know. I have no but, idea either. And I heard they took out evening gown, which in my personal opinion, I, that's my favorite part. So I, I don't even know like how, but they think it, the thing is too, you know, we're all going to be watching. We're all going to be oh, curious. Yeah. You know, so I guess we'll all find out together. Let's do another episode after we watch this year. We should watch together and do another Let's episode. do it. You I know? actually think we need to get a lot of the Miss USA girls together and some yeah. of your girls from Miss America year. Totally. And let's have a show and let's do a live show as we're watching the pageant. I am seriously so down for that. Let's absolutely plan that offline because I definitely want that. But I also think that people should keep an open mind. You know, it's like, it's so easy to judge. It's so easy to be like, oh, that's not tradition. You know, that's not normal. That's not what we want. Like you never know. Change can sometimes be great. And maybe we all will hate it and watch it and be like, oh, what happened? But maybe we'll watch it and be like, wow, that was actually really entertaining. And there's, you got to see a lot more of this from the women or whatever. So we'll see. We'll, we'll get back to you, audience members. We'll get back to you. We'll let you know. <laughs> so what would you recommend to young girls that are really wanting to compete in a pageant or maybe just learn a new skill or a new sport, whatever it may be, but they don't quite have enough self-esteem or confidence to do that? Sure. Oh gosh. Well, I can absolutely understand that. Um, but I think the one thing that you have to kind of decide is how badly that you want it. You know, if this is something that you really want, then there's a lot of steps that people can take to kind of learn that self-confidence and learn those sorts of things. So I think that there are, you know, various coaches out there that can help you with that. And you have to kind of find the right one for you. I think the, the best thing that anyone who's never done a pageant could ever do for themselves is reach out to somebody that's a former who relates to you. So if you mm -hmm. saw somebody up on stage that has the same talent as you, maybe reach out to them. If you saw someone compete and you've just heard they're the nicest person ever and they're really great in interview, maybe reach out to them. Because the thing is when we go to coaches or like when we go to those orientations and seminars and things as pageant girls where people, there's like one person who tries to like relate to 30 women or tries to be a coach but never really won a pageant or never really was involved. I think that you get mixed messages and you get kind of like cliches. You don't necessarily get authentic, real like education and help with what you want. So I think reaching out to somebody who's similar to you that you relate to and that you can trust and having them give you advice, you don't need to, you don't, they don't need to be a coach necessarily, but just someone that you may know that was a title holder. I definitely think it needs to be somebody who's actually competed in the system and won and done well, because I think that other than that, it's just kind of other people's opinions, but they, it didn't really work for them. So why would it work for you? But if you are nervous about things too, I would say just give it a try at maybe the local level and see how you feel. And then just practice, you know, practice makes perfect, but I don't think it's anything that's not new to us to be a little bit nervous. I mean, I was doing a monologue for goodness sakes. Like I had no idea how it was going to be received, but when you take the risk, there's definitely a lot of reward and there's a lot of people out there that are willing to help you beforehand. But yeah, I mean, 
honestly, it is nerve wracking. And self-esteem is kind of one of those things. And pageant is a comparison, whether you want it or not, between women. So you really have to have thick skin. But if you talk about it beforehand and you practice ahead of time, I think it's a breeze. Plus, you just also have to remember that these are just some people's opinions of you on one day of the year. You know, we say that all the time. It's like it could be different every single day. So you can't take it too personally. You got to have fun with it going into it, you know? Absolutely. I think you made a really good point too in finding a mentor because yeah. we could have never done this without our support systems. And that goes for every single, I'm speaking for all state title holders and probably, you know, definitely national title holders too. Definitely. Support systems are huge. Definitely. And I think there's a misconception that you need coaching or something like that to be perfect. And there's, that's such a difference. You don't need to walk perfectly. You don't need mm -hmm. to have the perfect swimsuit body. You need somebody who's going to mentor you on your skills and what you're really good at and just help you develop those and make sure that those come and shine through. I was never the skinniest. I was never the best at evening gown. I couldn't even afford an evening gown. My, the, the gown I won Miss Colorado in, I was barefoot and it was because it was off of Craigslist and I couldn't afford to get it hemmed properly. And I'm not saying be like me and show up completely unprepared. But what I am saying is that having the best gown, having the best body or being the absolute best in interview is not what's going to help you win. It's going to be that you come off completely authentically and that you're just yourself and that you're comfortable in everything that you're wearing. Of course, they want to see that you take care of yourself and that you picked a gown that's complementing your body and your figure. But they don't need to see that you're a size double zero with a 12 pack and you know every single president. Like, that's just not the case. Like, they just want a good, they want the girl that they can take to go to coffee with. You know, it's like, it's just, so find someone that you relate to that can help you kind of, you know, hone in on what you're really good at and let those things shine through. Because trying to be somebody else is never going to win. Never, ever. And never, and trying to be perfect is also never, ever going to win. I've never seen somebody who is the best in all three categories win ever in my no. life. And we're always going to get criticized in life, no matter what, what it is, right? Sure. Whether we're in a job, whether we're in a pageant, no matter what, there's always Absolutely. going to be a critic. So how can young girls really handle these critics, especially with social media? Man, social media is so brutal. It really, it re really is. I think honestly, that just comes from kind of having that, that self-confidence and that takes a little bit of time to build up. But what you can absolutely remember is that when you go out on stage, if you're giving everything that you've got and you know that in an interview you were completely 100% yourself, and if you chose a gown that 45 people hate but three people thought you know, were what was wonderful but you absolutely loved it, then it doesn't matter. And if you are happy with your workout routine and the way that you're feeding your body and you feel comfortable and you're sleeping well and you're a happy person, it just doesn't matter. I mean, I can't even tell you how many people ripped all of us apart on those like dumb forum boards, whatever they're called on for Miss America and for Miss USA. And for, you know, people who said, you know, awful things about us. But the thing is, especially after you've got the title too, it's kind of like, it's your year to make it. And you have to remember that you are a leadership. Like you're, you're a leader in that position. You know, when you win even a local, like that's your title and you're a leader in that position. So it's just the people who can't do what you've done and who are jealous of where you're going that are going to try to knock you down. But not everybody is going to like all of your choices. And so the only thing you need to remember is to make sure that you do. Make sure that you love every single choice that you're making. Make sure that when you're in an interview, you are 100% yourself. And you're speaking to people the way that you would genuinely speak to your mom or your best friend. Yeah. You know, pick a swimsuit that you absolutely love. Who cares if the rest of the world loves it? Because no matter what you do, no matter what you pick, someone is going to have a problem with it. And so just don't listen to them. If you block people for sure that are mean to you on social media, you don't need that. And they don't need to be seeing you. But also just remember that sometimes the people who are the meanest, they're watching all your stories. They're your fans. Believe me, they're just jealous. And it's just kind of, that's the world that we live in. And so just keep being you. And if you're always making choices that are authentic to who you are, none of, none of the rest matters. Who cares what people think? That's so good. So true. Be authentic to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone always had a problem with choice. I was up on stage in scrubs. But that was who I am. I'm a nurse to my core, and that's what I wanted to talk about. I didn't grow up singing or dancing. I grew up playing sports, and I still wanted to compete because I knew that I would be a great Miss America. And so I just chose to do that. And people had problems with it, and other people didn't. And it ended up me up on Ellen. So as long as you stay you're true to yourself, you never know what can happen. It's the, it's the unique ones and the different ones also that stand out. It's not the ones that look like everybody else. So wrapping up here with the pageant side of things, you just mentioned Ellen. Tell everybody what that was like, because for many of us, I've never been on Ellen or a show right. like that. So tell us what it's like and how you, again, confidence, how you weren't scared to death to walk out on her stage and how you just talked to her like a normal person. 
That was so <laughs> wild. Well, I think I, I'll be really honest. I'll just be really honest with you, Tor. I had like a wicked amount of confidence going into that whole media week because I didn't win Miss America. And so to have all of that attention and all these people calling, you know, my managers and wanting to have me set up on TV shows, it just made me feel like America had responded to my monologue and America had responded to me in a way that was just so much bigger than pageantry. It mattered to people that we were talking about nursing and it mattered to people that the reason I wanted Ellen on the $10 bill was because of what she stands for when it comes to <laughs> tolerance and inclusiveness in our community. And it was just the messages that I was able to portray at Miss America were so much bigger than butt blue and hairspray, you know? And I, so I think getting all that attention right after the pageant and having not won it just gave me wild confidence. I was just ready to, to kill it because I knew that I was doing it be on behalf of nursing and not really on behalf of Kelly which made it really important to me. It was it, so many other people were involved that it was important to me to do them justice. But walking out there, I mean, I was super nervous and I was on my way. They were so nice to me. Their producers were so kind. It was so fun to be backstage. They told me I was in a dressing room Taylor Swift had just been in. <laughs> they have all these like Ellen monogram snacks. It was so much fun. And they definitely prep you. They definitely get you ready. And like, you know, not like here's every question, but they're like, okay, let's just have a discussion about like, you know, what happened at Miss America. So you've already kind of talked about it. So you're not like freshly new, but yeah, I mean, we were just backstage. They had me do a couple of fun, like little interviews. And then I didn't get to meet her and I didn't get to meet her before I went out there because they wanted that excitement. But I, yeah, I went out there and it was just so crazy. It didn't feel real. I still remember it like it was yesterday because you have all these cameras and lights, just like you're at a pageant. We also have this audience and then you have Ellen DeGeneres sitting in front of me. I just was giddy and so happy, but I knew the questions that she was going to ask me were about, you know, nursing and why I did what I did on stage. And so it was easy to talk about because I'm just so familiar with my love of this profession, but it was definitely an experience. And she's just as nice as you think she is. She's just as wonderful. And she gave me $10,000 to finish school up for my doctorate, which is wow. exactly what I used it for. And yeah, she absolutely changed my life, but I have I have no idea how that whole thing happened. I just, I had every intention of saying Ellen, no matter pretty much what top five, if I made it that far, what question I was going to get. Somehow I was going to fit it in. Like, well, what's your favorite utensil? It's a spoon because, well, let's talk about Ellen. Like, you know, I was going to be like, I was going to figure fill it in because I just felt like at that time in our political climate, especially, it was really important to talk about being inclusive of others. And she's just so wonderful. So, but she's everything you want her to be and more. She's everything you think that she is. She's so kind. And yeah, it was like the best day of my entire life. And I wore that green dress, which now nobody can, we talk about the Ellen dress all the time. And it's just so great. Yeah, it was such a wonderful memory. Like what a blessing who gets that lucky, you know? They didn't have to have yeah. me on that show. And it was really cool. What an awesome experience. That's so neat. Awesome, yeah. And you was, said a blessing. So you know what, you're grateful for it. So that's even better. Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, I can't even. And at the time too, my parents were truly pulling from their retirement fund to help me make rent. I didn't have a car. It was like all this stuff. And so when she gave me that money to be able to, at the time, to be able to get my, help my parents stop having to do that and then to start school and all this stuff, it was like she really changed my life in that time. And now it's crazy to see four years later, I really am finishing school. I'm, I've got back on my feet. My parents don't have to pull from their retirement fund to help me make ends meet. And it's like, even me, I was Miss Colorado and I was on TV on Ellen. And even me, I had so many struggles that she didn't even know about and like, like blessed me with all of that. It's like just so crazy to me. She really, truly changed my life. That's amazing. So now switching gears from pageantry and now to career life. Mm -hmm. You are in the spotlight quite a bit still with doing interviews, doing speaking engagements, and also you're an ambassador. Yeah. How do you handle that spotlight and still stay authentic to yourself? Mm -hmm. This is water. I just wanted it in a cute cup. <laughs> um, it's Chardonnay. Yeah. Don't let her fool you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. No, but it's so funny. Well, I just think for me, it's just always kind of been easy for me to, to do public speaking. I think the problem with public speaking for other people is that they get so nervous that they start to become somebody that they're not. I've just always been so comfortable because I've always been playing sports or on some sort of stage my whole life. You know, people were always watching me do something, always, since when I was little. I was in musical theater when I was really, really little, but that stopped, you know, at like age 10. But I've always just kind of been in front of the camera or in front of eyes and on in an audience. And so after getting all this practice, you know, from Miss America being able to do, I've given like 85 keynote speeches now. I've been in front of so many big audiences and cameras that now it just feels like second nature. But in the beginning, it was for sure a lot harder. Like I couldn't eat before I would go out because I'd feel sick, no coffee, I'd be shaky. I had to practice, practice, practice. But once I just kind of got it down and I realized too, because people would come up to me, Tori, and they'd say, 
well, maybe you should do a Toastmasters class and like learn how to public speak. And I just thought to myself, absolutely not. I'm never going to do that. The reason why people are hiring me and, ask, and booking me to speak is because I'm just Kelly and I'm so content who I am and I'm genuine and I'm not perfect. I know I speak way too quickly and I know, you know, I talk fast and I can say so much in one breath and it's some people's cup of tea and it's some, and it's not but it's exactly who I am. And so every time now that I get up there, I know I'm just being me and so I'm comfortable. And I also know that if someone else now books me, they're gonna get exactly what the last person got, which is why they're booking me because I, I don't change, it's just across the board. But I really do, I love being on camera. I love being interviewed. I love speaking about things that matter because I think I'm also somebody who's done the research. I, I think it's important for us to have people in positions like you and I are in where we have you know shows like this and we have it following and influencing that we have like intelligent messages to contribute to society. It's really dangerous, you know, people who are influencers that have millions and millions of followers, but maybe don't have the best messages or, you know, or maybe aren't the most aware of like their following and what they're following might be taking from what they're putting out into the earth. And it's like, I just think it's so important to when we have this kind of power, which I know it's very, mine is much smaller on, on the scale, but I do have a following and I do have people listening. And I do have an audience. And for me, it's just sticking true to who I am and knowing that there might be little girls watching and being authentic and being intelligent and being kind and, and being very careful in, in the words that we choose. Because everyone that we're affecting toward, it's, they're impressionable minds. They're people that are listening to us because they want to hear what we have to say because they look up to us or they think that what we, our information is valuable. And that gives us the responsibility and a duty to make sure that we're doing them justice by giving them messages that are healthy and that are promoting you know, self-care and, and love and kindness and all, I, all the messages that you and I both find important to put onto this world. So for me, it's just being myself. It's just easy for me. I love it. But it did take practice. It wasn't always, it wasn't always. We didn't wake up like this. We were yeah, born we like this. We definitely were not born like this. It did take <laughs> practice. But I think if you start with just knowing that when anyone is listening to you, that you kind of have a responsibility to spread a message that's important to you and something, and it might be different for you and me, but that it's important to you because you care about other people and you're trying to do good in this world. I don't think you can go wrong. And we both still have challenges every single day. We go through challenges. We still have self-doubt. There's fears. I mean, every level that you get to in life, there's still wow. going to be those fears and doubts. So Absolutely. what would you say to these young girls that are listening that are going through a challenge right now, no matter what stage of life they're in, how can they overcome that challenge with confidence? Oh gosh. Well, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, which we have this whole interview, um, for me, a lot of the times when I'm struggling, I really look to therapy. I think having someone you can talk to is so important. I think far too often we bottle up our emotions and we compartmentalize our problems and we say, this sucks and this sucks. We put it in a box and we put that on the shelf and therapy really helps you kind of unpack it and actually deal with it. I'm not perfect by any means. My life has not been easy by any means. It's not as hard as other, some other people's lives and it's not as, e as easy as other people's. It's just, we all have our own stories. But I've definitely gone through some stuff and some stuff even more recently than not. And having someone to talk to is so, so amazing. And through those struggles too, it's kind of just always making healthy choices. So sometimes when we're struggling, we have unhealthy coping mechanisms and we might not even realize it. And so going to someone to talk to about it. There's also therapy. I'm a, I'm a nurse. So I'm going to tell you guys all the things. There's also therapy you can do exactly the way Tori and I are communicating right now. There's like Skype therapies online. So just look them up if you're going through anything. I think far too often we like, we minimize people's struggles and it's, oh, I don't need therapy. It's not that bad. And it's like, it's just somebody to talk to. It's somebody to have around. It's somebody to make sure that, you know, if you do have something that you want to talk about or try to unpack or navigate, I mean, I think therapy is just so wonderful. But I would also say too, to, you know, lean on your support system, tell somebody if you're struggling, you know, tell somebody what's going on, make sure that you have people around you, that you're making time for yourself, that you're making time for social life. I think it's important to have a balance. I really do. But I also think too, that there's just, there's something about being able to have somebody to talk to constantly that really helped me get through like a lot of what I was ever going through, you know, and it's just, it's just so nice. But yeah, if you're going through something hard, you're not alone and you don't have to do that. You don't have to do it alone. And if someone would have told me that a long time ago, I think some of mine would have been easier. So that's, that's my advice is I think therapy is the best. And I think going as often as possible is amazing. Even if you're feeling great, I think therapy is just wonderful. It's just having somebody to make sure that you're staying on track and that the way that you're you know, going about life is the way that you really want to and is, is a happy and healthy way of doing it. I love that you say therapy. I was literally just talking about my, talking to my brother yesterday about this and how society just like is frowned upon therapy. I mean, how it looks like you, you just really need help if you go to therapy. Like it's a yeah. negative. Right. Like really, it's a huge positive. I mean, I have a therapist. 
I'm, I'm with you. I'm in the same boat. If I can go to that baby every single week, I am every there. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's seen as such a weakness and it's like, oh, is it really so weak to have like going it's through something not. horrific and have somebody to not only help you through it, but to help you grieve it and understand how you really feel about it and help you move on from it. Like that's our weakness in this society. It's crazy to me. Right. But yeah, you think it's like so great. And a therapist is, can be, you know, whatever form of that is helpful for you, but man, taking care of yourself is so, so important. And we all go through struggles and some of them really suck. And so if you have somebody to help you work through it, it just makes it less sucky. I agree. Less sucky. Let's go with that. Yeah, let's just, I'll do all the things in life that are less sucky. Plus it's someone you can trust. You know, a lot of times in this world, we tell people things because they're curious or because we feel like we don't have anyone else to tell. And really they're curious. They don't care. They're just curious. They're not going to protect your privacy. They're not going to protect your confidentiality. They're not going to guard your heart. They're not going to really be there for you when you really need them to be. There's a lot of people like that in all of our lives. And there's a lot of people there that are, who are really wonderful support systems as right. well. I'm just saying a therapist is someone you can always count on to kind of have, have your back. Absolutely. I love it. That's, that's one of the best things you've said this whole time. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I am so full important. therapy. I think it's awesome. I just, I totally want to change the whole connotation on that word Me too. in society because I think it's the strong people and the most successful people in the world go and speak to somebody about, you know, their feelings and emotions. So. I totally agree with right you. On. All right. So wrapping up here, is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners? Just along the lines of really anything you are, you're doing so much to help others, which is absolutely amazing. Mm. Being an ambassador, um, just being Kelly, just Kelly. Just being Kelly. You know, no, the only thing I would tell people is to just be really, if you're going into pageants, like if you're watching this to get to know me as a pageant girl or to get to know Tori, I think pageants are absolutely wonderful for young women. And I think that as many should compete and should participate, they're so wonderful. Just always remember to just truly, truly stay true to yourself. Don't let anyone tell you that you need to be thinner or pick a longer gown or pick a different color or say, this is your answer. I'm telling you, I never won. And I was wildly successful in pageantry. And I don't mean that to be boastful, but winning Miss Colorado, Miss California, USA, second runner up at Miss America, top 10 at USA, that's success in pageants. Like most people yes, want to just get absolutely. to one of the pageants. And it's successful. I don't say that to be boastful. What I say that to be is I was never anything but me. I was always just genuine. I was never perfect in interview. I always chose my own wardrobe and never let anybody change my mind. I was always comfortable in all of my choices. And so that's any kind of, you know, help or just, yeah, just any assistance to somebody who's wanting to compete or competing. I never won because I was doing what someone else told me to do ever. And I was very, very successful. And so just, I don't think that you should have too many cooks in your kitchen telling you what to do. I think you should just be authentically yourself, come off as yourself, be fun, be funny, be relaxed, have a good time out on stage. And that will shine way more through. A lot of your judges are just normal people. So robotic pageant women freak them out. So just be <laughs> yourself and you're going to do great. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if you have any questions or any of your audience members want to talk to me about anything, you know, my handle's always been real nurse Kelly for six years. That's been my handle across everything. So, you know, they can always come and chat with me. I'm more than, more than happy to give people advice, but don't be afraid to try something new, but just always make sure that you are a hundred percent being yourself because you can't fake it for a year. It's, it would be way too difficult. You're amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today and all of our audience. I'm sure they just picked up on so much because I think you're inspiring every single day. I watch your Instagram all the time. And I watch you too. We're besties. I love it. Yes. It's so awesome. So anyways, thank you so much for being on the show and I hope to see your face in person soon. Absolutely. We got to go to the golf, the Phoenix Open again, too. You and I. That is a plan. Yes. Waste management was so much fun last year. Well, thanks for having me on. This is amazing. I'm so glad you're doing this. I think if there's anybody that's such a light in the pageant world and will be able to give wonderful, concrete, amazing advice that's healthy for all these young women competing, it is absolutely you. So I'm so glad you're ever watching this. Thanks. You are listening to an amazing human being on this show. Continue to watch and continue to listen to her guests because I would absolutely trust her in any situation to pick the proper thing or person for my daughter to listen to. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that episode just as much as I did. Please put your comments below, click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also follow me on social media at Miss Tori Cruz. Until next time, be unstoppable.